Okay, y'all good now? We got that like 24 hours of everybody freaking out, out of our systems. We like good to lock back in for the rest of this tournament. Great. Look, I know people were freaking out after that first loss, and I'm not going to try and sit here and feed you crap and say that like this win over SHG nullifies what happened against R7, especially whenever R7 did get 2-0 by GAM. Didn't necessarily look great. Yeah, obviously, like we still have our issues. I'm not denying that whatsoever. But exactly what I said would probably happen, happened. We scaled up a little bit. People got a little bit more comfortable on stage. And it was a night and day difference. I think one of the wilder things that we saw in the series that we will probably not see again was the decision to try and ban out Sniper specifically. In game one, banning out Jax and Cassante just for us to pick Renekton. Like, if you leave Renekton open, obviously, we are going to pick it. I think there's too many champs at the moment that Sniper can play that are all, like, top bruiser style that it's not worth banning them out. We saw them drop that going into the second series, but... It, you know, that just didn't work out. I think, like, if you're going to beat Sniper, you beat him simply by, like, macro and, like, just having better hands in lane. But the other pick that I don't think we will be getting at all for the rest of the series, unless people want to contest the pick, is going to be the Yone. People were very down on Quid after that uh, Vex game. He gets a comfort pick in the Yone. You pair that with a Kai'Sa, you pair that with a Leona, a Renekton that can just go in and fight, and weirdly, we didn't do a lot of that early on. It was a little bit more chaotic. We were trading all over the map. As you can tell, we were still flushing out uh, some, of the, some of the kinks with the squad. But once it hit like the 15 minute mark, it was a very slow, very methodical game from 100 Thieves to be able to take control of this and win it all. I wouldn't say that like we were like exponentially a better team in game one in particular, but you could tell when we finally decided to start turning it on, it fully went on. For being a 31, 32 minute game, the game kind of felt over from like the 25 minute mark. So like it took a bit to close out, but that's ultimately fine. Going to game two, they adapted. Rather than trying to play the Aurora themselves, they banned the Aurora, they banned the Yone, they banned our Ziggs which we have clearly shown Tomo can have a lot of priority and comfort on. It looks like Ziggs is going to be a permaban against us. But we finally get to see Quid on a control mage in Orianna, and oh my god, did he look good. He was dancing around Syndra Balls the entire game. Now, granted, obviously, it's not, you know, Showmaker Syndra, but still, like, that's a great game to get your feet underneath you, and he's hitting massive shockwaves, and the team in general is just playing phenomenal. Sniper had a few moments where he was... Uh, running it, not running it, but like he was pushing the momentum, pushing the edge a little bit further than some people would probably be comfortable with. I'm fine with him limit testing in games like this in a series where like you know that you're going to win. Like, hey, now you know that point for the next series where it's going to matter a lot more not to go past it. But the MVP of this series, I, I want to say it's still River. River didn't have a great game one, for being honest. I think I'd probably still give it to Quid. But game two from River on that Nocturne, oh. Oh, oh boy. I'm still willing to say that River's having the best individual player tournament of anyone right now. Of any team in planes, including Mad Lions and Gam, who already got through. I mean, maybe, uh, Levi's having a pretty good one as well. It's definitely between Levi and River for best of the tournament. We don't really have like a best individual player of the tournament award. I, I don't know who would. We have a finals MVP. We don't have like a tournament MVP. It'd be a really interesting award to track. But now what this means is that tomorrow we face up against PSG. A team who I would imagine we've actually probably scrimmed once or twice because it, we were probably under the assumption that we wouldn't face them. Hence why we played Mad Lions a bunch during the boot camp. You didn't assume the 100 Thieves was gonna drop to R7, so it was going to be a safe bet to scrim against them, and now that might come back to bite them in the butt. But PSG has looked off this entire tournament. They were supposed to be the by far and away favorites coming into play in stage, like better than every other team, and they've been slipping. Junjia specifically didn't have a great series against Mad Lions. In general, I can't get like a really good grasp on like why this team either does well or does bad. Like Maple is the clear standout in my mind. Asha also having a great tournament, but it, I don't know. They, they can't put it all together. It seems like it's sloppy around the edges. It's rough. And in terms of what I'm expecting for our series, I am expecting it to get a little bit messy. You got to realize like the stakes of this are elevated. And I saw Dom's rant the other day on our series against R7, like freaking out. And I'm look, he's entitled to his own opinion. He's entitled to, you know, react to things however he wants. But like 
we've been saying since the beginning that this 100 Thieves team is young and inexperienced. Their floor is very low. Their ceiling is very high. So yes, you are going to have those games, especially early on where we can drop. So I don't think the criticism to like the severity of which it was given was necessary. What's probably going to happen again with this PSG series is that nerves will play a factor for both teams. Both of these teams have an expectation to get out of play-in stage. And for 100 Thieves, I think this is a little bit of a reprieve. It's nice to come in with a win versus PSG coming off of a loss. But when you get to that game three, because yes, I am predicting this series is probably going to go to three games. The mechanical level of play is not going to be insane. It is literally just going to be a matter of who can calm their nerves and who can keep it together as a team the most to just hold on and withstand. I mean, hey, maybe we show up on the day and just absolutely stomp them. And the scrim 100 Thieves that we've been hearing about that has a 60% win rate has taken series off of apparently all of the European teams. Maybe they show up and just smash and like everything I'm saying here becomes completely irrelevant and it's just a great win. But you can't discount nerves. You can't. Which is why like I expected that Dom rant to be like a little bit less because it's like you understand more than anybody like the nerves that come with playing on stage. Granted, he didn't play on, you know, well, yeah, he played in front of crowds the size of the LEC studio. I keep forgetting that we're there. I don't know. It's just like I feel like pro players in particular, for whatever reason, or at least like the co-streamers, like forget that nerves are a thing when talking about this. But regardless, I think it's going to be a fun series. I'm really looking forward to what's to come. There's really no sense of talking about what's going to happen after this series, regardless of whether we win and the potential opponent opponents we would face or whether we lose and go home. Uh, we'll save all that for Monday. The game is tomorrow at 11 a.m. I will be teaching golf up in Queens, so I'll be watching passively on my phone, but I won't be able to actually watch the entire series, unfortunately. I am going to save the draw show and my reaction for whenever I come home, and we'll do an episode of The Pit discussing the draw itself, going over the series, and highlighting some notes around the community. But I want to close this out and talk about community. I know it's only one person that was in my Twitter replies that made me think about this, but it's a message that I want to make clear to people, because I use the word we a lot, obviously, and I feel like most people on YouTube tend to have more of a sports fandom background, or at least, like, my YouTube following than Twitter. So, like, they get the concept that is... The 12th man. And for those that don't know what the 12th man is, it's a football term, like an American football term, where there are 11 players on the field for the Seattle Seahawks, but the 12th man is the fandom, are the people in the stands that can make a tangible difference. Now there, it's a whole other different level because they could actually break like the sound, or they can like register on the Richter scale, I think, with how loud they get. But yes, I'm going to talk as if I'm part of the team because the fandom is part of the team. That's the whole point of sports. I encourage you all to do the same thing as well. I've noticed people since the R7 series start to distance themselves. And it's fine to, like in C9's words, clench up a bit or just get worried or feel those emotions. That's fine. But like you can talk as we, as if you are part of the team. There's a line that you don't cross, obviously, and it's a matter of feeling that out the same way with all banter in real life. You can go at people, you know, I went at Cloud9 on Twitter, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to settle your differences and move on. Or for us, you know, just be able to banter back and forth. I fully expect them to give me uh, just as much crap the next time that things come around that way. But yes, the fans are part of the team and embrace that. It's fun. It's a good time. I know like everybody in low esports tends to be more fans of players rather than teams. I know that's the standard, but the whole point of all this is to start changing that culture. That's what the rendezvous is all about, is like giving us 100 Thieves fans a place to come together, a place to talk, a place to air our grievances, but also discuss the highs. I know I'm wearing a Shopify beanie. I really need to get 100 Thieves one uh, sometime soon whenever they do like a winter collection so that I can have one of these, but I, at least I'm wearing the 100 Thieves shirt. So yeah, I just wanted to put that message out there for people. It's like, allow yourself to embrace the fandom. Like, that's perfectly fine to use we, us, and all these, like, inclusive terms. Because, yes, you are technically part of the org. Maybe not on their payroll, but you're definitely funding the paychecks. So I will see you all on the other side. I hope this goes well. I hope we were able to go on the Swiss. I'm feeling confident, personally. I'm not all, like, that worried. I think we're scaling at the right pace that I think this will be a 2-1 in our favor. It will get a little bit sloppy. We'll get a little bit down in the dirt. The whole goal is to get out of Swiss stage. And ultimately, a golf term to use is there's no pictures on a scorecard. As long as we get out, sure, people will remember the R7 loss, but it will be dampened pretty severely by the fact that we do get out. And if we can get a chance to play Europe in that 0-2 matchup in Swiss, that would give us a shot at redemption. 
but one step at a time, one series at a time. We've knocked out one team from the PCS, it's time to knock out the other. It's 100 Thieves versus the PCS, and I like our odds. Mm -hmm.